Welcome Aquarius to your Aquarius June 2021 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James for those of you who are just stopping by for the first time and the subscribers. Great to see you again. Much love and affection to you. I always look forward to seeing you each month. Now, by the way, I've had the, um, the great pleasure of doing some one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant readings for some of you Aquarian gentlemen and ladies in the course of the last month. And if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one reading with me, just check out the information that's in the description box below. Have a look at the website in particular. I think you'll find that uh, very interesting in the area of clairvoyance. Now, uh, what we are going to do, what, look, what, we've, what you have found, as, as I have done, is that uh, we only really need to take five cards, don't we, as a rule, each month, because, because each card is so jam-packed full of information that it, um, it's pointless uh, taking any more. We'd be here for days. But this gives us the great overall, in-depth uh, view on what's happening. There's the King of Cups. Now this deck is a medieval artwork deck. I think you'll find it really, there's the moon quite captivating the, the artwork on it. Uh, it's, it's likely that you haven't seen it before. For some reason, a lot of the decks that I have, they just don't seem to be popular with um, people out there. There's the Wheel of Fortune right in the center of your spread there. And um, I, I doubt that you've seen this one before, but I think you'll, you'll join with me in really appreciating the art that's on it. But, do you know, the Seven of Swords, you know, the experience is, um, well, this has come out, so we'll take it, whatever it is. And what is it? The Two of Cups. Uh, the, the experience, of course, depends on, uh, on how all the cards are to play with. With one another and on the and, and with the astrology of course uh, but the artwork is is really quite unlike anything which we've had here on the channel for for some time and uh, let's have a look at it now so come and sit down next to me we'll have a good close look at the imagery together while I do the reading for you there now can you see let's have an interesting well let's have a look at this Knight of Cups a lot of Pisces around this and Aquarius around here as well. So you might know another Aquarian to whom this applies and it will definitely be applying to you. Well, what do you have to tell me this month? This month, King of Cups? Well, the King of Cups is the master of the heart, emotions and intuition. He is the Grail King. He embodies the elements of fire, which is spirit, and water, soul, balancing and integrating the fiery masculine courage with the watery feminine empathy. And that results in deep intuitive wisdom that blossoms into an intense passion for unconditional love. Well, the King of Cups is an enlightened master of emotional integrity. He trusts what his heart speaks and remains open always to spirit. The King of Cups is a vehicle for the love and healing energy of the cosmic Christ, the cosmic Krishna, or of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or of the Buddha, consciousness, the consciousness of those states of being that blesses humanity, awakening the primordial wisdom, thus opening the door to divine love. Well, the King of Cups himself has mastered love. And these court cards, of course, can be of either gender, irrespective of how they are drawn, you know. Let's have a look here. Now, he's mastered love and he, he, he moves it from the lower realms of his nature to the higher realms of spirit. His love has moved up and down through each chakra, embracing and experiencing each level. And what we can say also about him is that he has expanded out his crown chakra in this card here, I think, to 
find spirit. His physical form is filled with the light and love of the divine and the beautiful healing energy pours out to his kingdom through his heart chakra. Now when this King of Cups enters for you, as he has done, he brings guidance, compassion, love and healing. Your creative imagination and life forces join, bringing opportunities and inspired visions to, to be manifest. The King of Cups signals a time when new doorways open for you. He brings success, achievement or recognition. He indicates a time to listen to the stirrings in your heart. The gifts of courage and focus are now in place to assist in pursuing a vision you wish to manifest. Pay attention and exercise your intuition as it will guide you through opportunities and challenges. Emotional matters can become more intense as the heart opens, though, you know. You may feel the need to seek guidance, or I think you may be a counselor or mentor for somebody else at this time. You could even become involved in charity work and volunteering in your community. This King of Cups brings the opportunity of emotional maturity to any situation. Listen to your inner truth. It is time to be authentic with yourself and those around you. Don't be misguided by others, but move from a place of love. This King's message is to bring understanding, kindness, compassion and gentleness listening to your heart before you act. Well, what's sitting underneath it? Let's have a look. It is the, the what? The Seven of Swords. Okay, let's have a better look at it, shall we? Here we go. Is the Seven of Swords. Venus in Aquarius, the last decan of Aquarius here. Now, the Seven of Swords can appear when you find yourself struggling through inner conflict and frustration. You may be experiencing a challenging situation at the present where you feel you have no control, leaving you with a sense of futility or helplessness. Well, you're not Robinson Crusoe in that respect. Everybody goes through this from time to time and thoughts and actions that do not express your true self may begin to arise. This unsettled energy is seeking an outlet to either create a negative consequence or to be transformed into a higher awareness. Now some small or large event in life has initiated a calling, taking you on an in a spiritual journey to understanding your purpose and potential. The Seven of Swords signals an inner shift in consciousness, mentally and spiritually. The key to the Seven of Swords is to pull within, focus on what needs to shift, and then See what needs to be changed in your life internally and externally. Make the adjustments. Let go of outworn patterns and relationships. Then open up to the emerging new insights that you get. The gift of this card you see is a breakthrough on a spiritual and a mental level bringing clarity. Now the Seven of Swords brings new thought patterns that challenge the old parts of yourself. And this inner shift causes, or can cause, mental resistance and internal unrest. The transformation of yourself, I think though, has already begun. Acceptance and surrender to the change will allow you to unite with your new aspect bringing heightened spiritual awareness and opportunity to regain your 
mental strength and inner intuitiveness to review challenges or conflicts in a new light, thus discovering creative solutions, freeing you from struggle. Now, if your thoughts are scattered and you feel as though you are standing on shaky ground, the Seven of Swords brings clarity to cut through confusion and futility, guiding you through fear and limitations to a place of stability and balance. Conflicts will soon dissipate into the light of spiritual wisdom. Whatever obstacles you face requires your mind to act in union with your heart. Well, this card brings a time out to reflect on what is actually important to you. What dreams and desires do you want to put into action? And when there is confusion, dig deep within before you act. You are living and creating your karma every day with your choices and actions. Now, where shall we go next? We've got this um, good wheel of fortune and I want to have a look at this moon card. This looks interesting. It's on the same line as that King of Cups and it's sitting above Two of Cups, which is about love. The Two of Cups is Venus in Cancer. Very, very, very spiritual. Now, the moon, of course, is, um, is the moon and it is a major arcana. Number 18, well, the moon is full of mystery and wonderment. Its waxing and waning cycles reflect death and rebirth, fertility, intense dreams, deep sleep, heightened psychic abilities, I think, and unexpected situations and transformation. Its cycles reflect the cycles of our spiritual and physical paths in the world of matter. The moon stirs an ancient, mysterious feeling within us. Now it's Major Arcana number 18. Now for me, numerologically, 18 is the number of challenge, tests, initiation, intuition, inner strength, and completion. This card here intensifies any situation, taking it to unexpected realms. The moon is the threshold or gateway to a new and unknown reality. It is yet another initiation and its path can be referred to as the dark night of the soul. If you have ever walked outside at night under a full moon without a flashlight and away from any light source, you have experienced the moon's mysterious, illusionary scenery. It is surrealistic. The scenery around you has a different, shadowy cast to it. It takes you out of the ordinary. Don't get lost in its illusions. You have to use your senses and pay attention. You have to trust your intuition and your instincts. Now, the moon also represents the gateway to the unknown. It brings you to a new unfamiliar ground and all the fears and demons that you have carried are now bigger, scarier and meaner monsters than you had ever experienced. When the moon calls you to enter the darkness, feelings and emotions come out of nowhere or just trust your inner divine light the moon reminds you to go forward without worrying about all the what ifs. Trust your authentic self and fight the monsters. Light is always brighter than darkness. The moon's guiding light says, follow me, use your inner strength and focus. Trust your intuition and instincts and you will wake up on the other side of the threshold liberated. Well, the passage through the 
Moon's threshold is tough, but the reward is renewal. Challenging situations propel you towards transformation. You've earned the rite of passage. The gift of wisdom and love come to you. Now, as the moon reflects all its energy and light onto you, you, in turn, reflect the energy of love and light to others. Uh, you, you know that we are spiritual beings living in physical bodies, experiencing a material life. Our bodies are vehicles to spread beauty, love and goodwill to humanity and Mother Earth. Well, the moon can inspire you on your way to new ideas and paths, though it doesn't reveal the total situation to you. It teaches you to tap into your intuition and trust. It's, it opens information and inherent memories through dreams, meditation, visions, and prayer. And when you pray, don't use words. Just set an intention, clear your mind, and let things happen. It reflects where you are on your cycle of life and how you feel about about it. It reminds you the cycles of life and your spiritual paths are always beginning, ending and rebirthing. The moon reminds you that you will pass through the threshold many times on many levels and each time you do, you heal yourself and your awareness becomes more expanded and your wisdom becomes deeper. The moon reflects the sun. You reflect the divine. Now, here is another major arcana, which is the Wheel of Fortune. And let us have a good look at it. Now, the Wheel of Fortune represents the ever-changing cycle in your life. Your life is in constant motion, revolving around the ups and downs that life hands you. No moment ever stays the same. Just as you are getting comfortable, the wheel turns and you are moving towards another situation, sometimes good, sometimes eh, not so good. But at times, you may think that the wheel is stuck because the bad luck funk has been visiting way too long. But you have to remember that the Wheel of Fortune is also the karmic Wheel of Fate. So, uh, it may be that uh, on the many multi-levels of lifetime, you know, you could be paying a bigger bill this time around than another. Eventually, though, the wheel does shift. And sometimes you don't just recognize it because you are so wound up in what you think should happen. Well, the Wheel of Fortune really is the game of life. There are no guarantees, however. How you play out your fate is up to you. It's, it's good to know where you are on the Wheel of Fortune. Are you at the bottom going up or are you at the top ready to cycle on yet another journey or transition. What you want to remember is that your present actions will affect your life and that of others now and into the, for and into the future. The, the Wheel of Fortune spins those actions around creating your fate. You never know when a good or not so good deed will come around again to greet you. The Wheel of Fortune represents cause and effect. One of the lessons of the wheel is to stay in the hub, centered in the middle here. Because if you are able to stay in the hub, no matter what confronts you, if you stay centered, you are able to act from a place of balance rather than from a place of reactionary emotions. When you are centered or in your hub, 
You are aware of your strengths and weaknesses, your limits and boundaries, doing the best that you can with what you've got. Now, you may not be in control of circumstances, none of us are, but you can be in control of how you deal with them. The wheel is the ever-turning cycle of life, death and rebirth. That's number, which is 10 numerologically. Well, it uh, can mean the end or completion of something as well as the beginning of something new. It represents unexpected encounters and twists of fate. You never know what is around the corner. The Wheel of Fortune brings gifts of movement, change, good fortune, success, karma, all coming into your destiny. This is a card of extreme good fortune. This is a turning point in your life and the road ahead of you is going to be illuminated by light. Well, what do we have finally? Here it is, the Two of Cups. Now, I think I mentioned it before that the astrology of this is Venus, the planet of love and beauty in Cancer, the most maternal of all the signs. Beautifully placed here. Well, the Two of Cups symbolizes romantic love and the start of a new relationship that can become very deep, blossoming into a committed union of the heart. Now, incidentally, the members of the lesbian and gay communities can just make the necessary mental adjustment with respect to the picture there. Now, the Two of Cups represents a strong physical attraction combined with a deep spiritual commitment. The two here symbolizes harmony, understanding, healing, and passion. The energy of this partnership emerges with fresh, new, and exciting feelings. The desire to experience and express love without controlling or limiting another brings peace to the heart like uh, like like the lovers from the major arcana the two of cups joins together and balances one's inner polarities of masculine and feminine aspects now it also activates the physical magnetic force of attraction so people are going to find you very attractive during this period the key to the Two of Cups is to be open to love and the passion it offers. The gift of this card, quite simply, is bliss. Now, what I should also say here is that, well, we all know that new love is exalting and exciting. It takes our senses and emotions to new heights of insights and experiences. The feeling is like nothing else and you want to spend every moment with your other half. When you swim in the sea of love, you feel the ecstasy of losing the self. It can be a little frightening as it may seem too good to be true. But the Two of Cups whispers, trust, experience, and love with an open heart. You will be fulfilled. Well, love puts us on a path to many peaks and valleys, doesn't it? When the Two of Cups appears, it symbolizes the start of a love affair, generally, or a partnership or a friendship. Now, if you are already in a relationship, it represents a deeper level of love evolving with a stronger spiritual union. In business and enterprise, it symbolizes a partnership of like-minded people sharing ideas and talents. It signals a developing friendship that is supporting and refreshing. The Two of Cups brings celebration of marriages or union or moving in with each other sometimes, so be on the lookout for that. It also brings reconciliation or truce to conflicts. It reminds you that compromise 
can bring new realizations and agreement. It asks you to learn to forgive. Uh, it's not easy, I know, but it does work. And the Two of Cups gift of love is healing to the heart, the body and the spirit. What a beautiful set of cards for you. Good job, Aquarius. That's the way it is for you this month. Well, there it is, your June 2021 reading. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did uh, providing it to you. I'm sure that you did. Now, if you did do, can you please leave a like? Uh, because the YouTube gods like uh, likes on channels and it allows other people to enjoy what we enjoy. But look, I, I love doing that for you, and I think it's going to be a, a very good month for you. A couple of things to get over, a little bit of, you know, a bump here and there, but things moving forward really well. And isn't it interesting how much information can be derived from just looking at the one card? It never ceases to amaze me. But until I see you again next time, remember one thing, and it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Until then, it's bye for now.